Hi, John with eTrailer. Hey, if you want to get the most out of your SUV and open up your world to a host of accessories, then check out this eTrailer Class 3 receiver hitch that we installed on our 2023 Mazda CX-5. So when I used to think about putting a receiver hitch on my car, I always thought about it in the terms of towing something, but today there's just so many different products out on the market that you can take advantage of, like bike racks and cargo carriers, um, even ball mounts for if you do want to do some towing. So uh, one of the things that stands out about this hitch right off the bat to me is the matte black finish. This is something that eTrailer has here and I love it. I, I, when they first came out with it, it was something that caught my attention. This matte black finish just matches on all of these cars, this matte lower finish on these fascias back here and it blends in, it gives it a nice factory look. Um, all you see on this is the receiver tube. This has a hidden cross tube on it. It goes up and above behind the bumper here um, and just gives it a really nice clean look. Now this is a class 3 receiver hitch. That means this is a 2 inch by 2 inch opening here. This is a reinforced collar on this. Um, this is going to be the most popular size that you would want to get um, if you're towing something for ball mounts. Uh, if you're looking at cargo racks and bike racks, you are going to have the most options when it comes to picking accessories. Now this hitch is going to have a wire type chain hanger on it, which I like. Um, it's just easily accessible for stuff like your standard S hooks like this. You have no problem getting those in there. And if you have something bigger like this heavy duty Clevis style, still no problem getting those in there. Um, as far as let's talk accessories, because this hitch just comes by itself like this. Now, if you're going to be doing some towing and you're new to towing, you need a pin and clip. These aren't included, but we have these here at eTrailer. This is a five inch, five eighths of an inch size, and this locks in just like this. This will work for you. If you want something with a little bit more security, we have a pin and clip style that takes a key, and you can lock up your stuff if security is what you're after. Now, speaking of accessories, we're going to get some measurements on this hitch. I do like um, how it sits back behind the bumper. That way, if you're walking around, you're not going to bang your ankle on it or anything. It's just one of those things that I've done a million times, and I like the way that this one is situated. So let's get some measurements from the ground to the top of the inside collar here. We're looking at 13 and a half inches on our Mazda. We we'll go from the center hole to the edge of our fascia right here, looking at about three and a half inches. Now, these measurements are important if you either have or you're picking out um, accessories, like a ball mount, for instance, where if you're going to tow something, you're going to want a ball mount that comes out and probably has a slight rise to it, um, since it's sitting a little low on the Mazda here. Or if you have folding accessories, like a cargo carrier or a bike rack, um, when they come out and they fold up, you want to know how much clearance you have between your accessory and your fascia. Now, speaking of accessories, let's let's talk about some weight capacity of, of this hitch. Um, this is a really heavy-duty hitch, uh, especially for the Mazda, but this is something that's great, um, say, for a cargo rack that you're going to load a generator on. The capacity of this is going to be 600 pounds of tongue weight rating. That's going to be the force pushing down on it. So if you have a cargo wrap loaded up with generators and camping gear and everything else, you don't have to worry about it. Or if you have a dirt bike um, and you want to get um, something back here to support it going down the road, don't have to worry about it. Uh, as far as towing capacity, 4,000 pounds. I, it's probably more than this Mazda can handle, but hey, bigger is better, right? So 4,000 pounds trailer weight rating, that's going to be the weight of your trailer, any cargo that you put on it or in it. Now always be sure to check your owner's manual to make sure you know how much your Mazda can tow. So final thoughts on our e-trailer hitch. I will tell you that this is my favorite hitch and it's my favorite size to the class three uh, two inch receiver just because of what I said. You have the most options when picking accessories or towing. Um, I love the looks of this hitch on this car. And uh, as far as installation goes, look, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you could probably have this done in about an hour, give or take, on your driveway. Now, we've got some tips and tricks to help you out if you are working on your driveway. Uh, if you want to stick around, check it out. If you're interested to see how it gets installed on our Mazda, we'll show you step by step. So let's begin our installation. So at the back of your bumper here on your Mazda, you're going to have a plastic trim piece right here that's being held in by two pushpin fasteners. And you can use either a hook tool like this or a small screwdriver to get those out. We'll basically just pick the center. You push, pull the center out, 
and slide that out. You have one on each side here. So to actually remove the trim panel here, I pulled this side down so you could see there's a plastic clip right here and I took my screwdriver and I came up on the back side of it and I pushed it towards the rear of the car to release it and then pull it down. We'll go ahead and do this on this side so you can actually see it in action here. I'll take my flathead, come on the back side of that tab, push towards the back of the car and lower it down. Now, we're not gonna be reusing this so you can either keep it or throw it away. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to lower the exhaust. We've got a can buckle tie down strap here and I just went in on either side of the car up on the uh, coil springs here and looped it and then looped it around this exhaust flange. This is gonna help us when we take the rubber isolators off the exhaust to lower this exhaust down in a controlled setting so we're not gonna put any extra strain on the uh, system here. So I've just got a pry bar and I've sprayed this down with silicone spray. If you don't have a silicone spray, you can use soapy water. You really need a lot of lubrication in here to get these things off. Just slide that in there. It makes it a lot easier when these things are slick. It's almost impossible if they're not. And go ahead and do uh, the passenger side here the same way. I'll just take this in the back slot of the rubber hanger, kind of push with my thumb. Now we've got four of them on this muffler here. And uh, we're gonna get these off. Then we can lower the exhaust down. This one actually has, you can get some pressure off the muffler itself. And I think it's important on this one to leave the rubber isolators on the vehicle and take them off the muffler. I think what's gonna end up happening is once we have the hitch up here, it's gonna be nearly impossible to get these to align back on the car. So we're gonna leave these on the car and take them off the muffler on all four sides. Just keep an eye on your exhaust system as you're bringing it down, but we're only gonna need enough to slide the flanges of the pitch up to the frame here. So we'll start with this. Hey, for you guys working on your driveway, um, there is one other way to do this. I wanted to show you real quick, because honestly, if it was me, I'd probably do the same thing. If you come up underneath on this Mazda, you're gonna see an exhaust flange right here, and you've got two 14 millimeter or 9 16 bolts. You could just undo these and then take this entire muffler down. It is lightweight, and that way, you're gonna have more space to roll your floor jack in and lift the jack up and just more, move to, more room to maneuver. It's gonna add maybe 15 minutes more at the most, but it's gonna be totally worth it, especially if you're tight on space. Okay, now these next couple of steps are gonna be the same for both sides of the vehicle. So just for video's sake, I'm gonna show you what to do here. Just make sure you do it on both sides. Um, right off the bat, we're gonna have two um, places in the frame that have a hole in it and they put factory tape over it. We're going to take this tape off. You have one back here and back towards the bumper, you have one right here. We're going to scrape that off with either a screwdriver or a chisel or whatever you have to get the tape off. just tape, but to put that rubberized undercoating on there and it makes it kind of tough. Basically just want to expose the uh, weld nut that's inside of there. I don't have to go crazy. Hey, while you're scraping and exposing these holes, um, on our Mazda, you can see some of this rubberized uh, undercoating here. If you've got any buildup on yours, Go ahead and scrape that off too. It's gonna to make your life a little bit easier once you get the hitch and have it up on the frame here. These, these hitches are a pretty tight fit and anything like this you, might give you a hard time trying to get this to fit up here with this stuff. So just feel free to scrape any real chunky stuff out of the way. Now again, on both sides 
of the frame here, you're going to have a factory wire harness that needs to get out of the way. We're going to relocate this later when we install the hitch. The hitch comes with um, some zip ties that we're going to be able to get this out of the way. I'm using a trim panel tool. We have these here at E-Trailer. Um, you can also use a big screwdriver or something. It's just one of these mushroom fasteners that goes into the hole here. There you go. Just like that. Do this on both sides. And hey, while we're talking about making your life easier when the hitch is up here, get yourself a bottle brush and we use this to get any dirt that is collected inside of these weld nuts back here. Just run it in and out. And your kit's gonna come with hardware. I like to test and make sure that this is nice and clean before I'm sitting there and holding the heavy hitch up there and trying to get this thing threaded. So um, you're going to have a one weld nut on each side of this Mazda here. So do this on both sides. Now in your kit, for these, for these rear most holes, this is towards the back of the bumper here, you're going to have a carriage bolt. That'll be you have the squares under here. You're going to have a spacer like this. And then you're going to have um, a fish wire. So the way to do this, we're going to run this spring through the hole in the side and down the bottom here. And you put your spacer and then thread your carriage bolt on the spring. Just run it up until it's on all the way like that. And once we get the hitch into place, how this works is you just kind of feed the spacer up first and then the carriage bolt and you'll pull it through the hole like that but because this hitch comes up on either side like this we're going to tuck this in right now so it doesn't get in our way and we're going to do this on both sides now your kit's going to come with two different types of washers. You've got just a regular flat washer. It's smooth on both sides. You're also going to have a conical tooth washer. Now we're going to use these to actually bolt the hitch up. These are the ones we're interested in right now. So we've got four of these and that's because on our hitch, we're going to tape them to the inside. These are going to be spacers between the hitch and your frame. So if you've got some, uh, Masking tape works great. Duct tape, if you want, doesn't really matter. Um, and you kind of want to tape these on here securely because when you're raising this thing up, it's going to be kind of bulky and kind of heavy. And you want that washer to stay in place. So you can do that and then just poke a hole in the center for the bolt to go through. So we'll do one here, one down here, and then repeat the process on the other side of the hitch. Now, before we raise our hitch up to the frame of the vehicle, this is the hardware you're gonna be looking for. Um, this is gonna go and install towards the front side, those, those front holes with the weld nuts. You're gonna have the conical tooth washers, so we'll set these up right now. The teeth are gonna be facing towards the hitch, and these will go in the back. And then the front, where we ran the fish wire through, you just need these locking flange nuts here. So that's the hardware we're going to use to bolt it, the hitch up to the frame. Now this is a time when it's nice to have an extra set of hands. This is kind of bulky and heavy, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to come up over the exhaust here. And remember, you've got your wires that we disconnected on this side. So the hitch is going to have to go above that. Now's a good time to feed the fish wire in from the inside out on your hitch. And let's see where it caught. You may have to feed it under the bumper. You may have to pull out. Watch your fingers. Come down a little bit and go up. So once we have this through on both sides, it's, it's kind of being supported right now, but we're going to get the flange nut on there to hold it securely. So a lot of times these things will be able to get these off of here easy enough and sometimes not sometimes you just got to pull it and deform the spiral here and we'll take our flange nut this is all we need for this one and we're going to put it on loosely then we can take our bolt and 
feed it in back here. We may need to wiggle the hitch around. I'm picking up on the center of the hitch right now and it caused the back end to drop and that's what got it in the hole there because we got a little bit of wiggle room like that. Definitely made it easier. So go ahead and do this on both sides. We're just gonna we're just gonna snug these up and then we'll torque them to the specs in our installation manual. Now when torquing these, it is important to note that this half inch hardware back here is high as it has a higher torque value than the ones in the rear. So just, just keep that in mind when you're torquing these. Now your kit is gonna come with two zip ties and you can go in between your hitch and your frame here because we put those spacers in. I'm gonna run this up. And we'll secure this wiring harness that used to be in the frame here. We'll just slide this back just to keep it away from your exhaust. That's all we're looking for right here. None of this moves under here, but the exhaust gets kind of warm. So do the same thing on both sides. Now, as far as the hitch installation goes, you're finished with that. It's bolted up. The only thing we have to do is raise the exhaust back up. Now, if you took your muffler off, it's probably gonna be easier for you to raise the muffler up, just like I'm gonna do right now, and attach it, and then bring your pipe up and attach the flange up there. I'll just come back and start at the back mounts. You can see once, once you have soapy water or silicone lubricant on here, these things are really super easy. This is, this is kind of the make or break with these rubber hangers like that. If they don't have lubricant, they don't want to move and they are nearly impossible to get off. So get that up there. And for sure, I'm glad that we left these rubber isolators on the frame and not on this. This would have been very difficult if we had taken off the top instead of the bottom. Give it a shake, we're good. You can remove your cam buckle tie down strap because you just installed your hitch. And that was a look at E-Trailer's class three receiver hitch on our 2023 Mazda CX-5.